Hey everyone, so today I'm going to show you a really cool project that just came or just became open source um, just a couple months ago. It's called Actual or Actual Budget. It's a local first personal finance system and it was released by or was built and released by James Long. So originally he built it for himself. Um, he was kind of tired with all the budgeting tools that were out there, either they were ad supported or had like insufficient capabilities. Um, or alternatively, you would deal with like Excel or Google Sheet files, which also had their own limitations. So he built this for himself, um, tried to make a business out of it and, and launched it on, on Product Hunt um, a couple of years back. But unfortunately, you know, it's super hard to bootstrap a business and um, but instead of just giving up on the project, because it still provides a huge amount of value, um, and especially in these days, it's it's super important to be on top of your finances. So I saw this Twitter message from James. I'm open sourcing actual, and and I was I was amazed. It's like this is crazy. Um, now I can finally get to see how it's built and. Um, Obviously, it's sad that it didn't become a viable business, but I think it has a lot of potential as an open source project because it's um, fully self-containing. Um, it is local first, so it has a lot of... Um, it actually runs better as an open source project that you can install by yourself than if you had to build all the authentication and everything on top just to make it work as a hosted service. So I think there's a huge upside to this. Um, and yeah, I want to dive in and, and kind of like show you what this project is all about. So basically there are two types of um, repositories that you want to look at. Um, one is called actual, and this is your kind of like local first um, project. This only contains the API and um, kind of like um, other packages such as the desktop client or the electron client, um, and also the mobile clients, actually. Um, however, right in the installation, he suggests that if you want to just get started and you want everything self-contained, the best way is actually using the server. So the server is called actual server, and it's another project um, that's Kind of like giving you a a docker file um, that runs both the web and the server at the same time and this then again allows you to you know host it anywhere and have access to it from anywhere on the internet um, this is no longer local first but it's um it's still you know your own personal finance system um that's kind of like self-contained if you wanted to just run the, the front end, that's fine too. And you can pull this up anywhere. And then just, if you had a server, you could connect to the server um, that's you know running on some IP or on your personal domain. Um, so today I want to like jump into the actual server because I'm actually interested in running this um, instead of my Google Sheets setup, which I have, which I've been tracking my personal finance over the last five years. Um, and I'm really interested in, in using actual um, long term as an alternative to Google. Um, yeah, and for this, I, you know, want to host it uh, via Docker, but you can also host it obviously from source. Um, you can build the Docker, uh, Docker image from source as well. But he's all also uploaded um, two files kind of like on on Docker Hub and GitHub registry. So we'll be using this. I won't be using the deploy instruction that he mentioned here, which he's recommending using Fly.io. It's an alternative to Heroku. Um, instead, I'm, I want a bit more control over my server. So uh, I'm just going to spin up uh, a plain old server and going to use um, install everything with Docker and, and then run the Docker as a container. Uh, so the Docker image as a container. However, what's super great here is persisting server data, right? 
I, I don't want to have the problem that, you know, if there's an updated version of actual um, and I'm up, uploading it, that um, all of a sudden kind of like the data, which is local on my host, right, on my server, uh, then gets all deleted and, and wiped. So I'm, I'm just going to persist the data in a separate volume, um, which I'm also creating um, on, on a server. So for this, I've used, you know, DigitalOcean. It's just, for me, it's the fastest way to get up and running for a video like this and show you guys how it works with a plain server. But of course, you can use any other um, cloud provider or run it locally, however you want. Um, I set up, a, I think, one of the, the smallest um, droplet that they have. Um, and I created a, and attached a separate volume. So um, volume it's in the Frankfurt region because you know I'm I'm in Germany, but um, this volume is also very small because I suggest that or I suppose that there won't be you know big files, but only like text files in a, like a SQLite uh, database. So I don't need like massive storage because there's not going to be images or something like uploaded um, to this volume. It's on, only going to be a text database. There are instructions on how to configure your volume on your droplet. So um, you can like do this really easily and um, just follow the instructions here. It's basically like copy and paste, really. Um, it basically just creates a mount point on your host um, and attaches it kind of like to this to this volume here. And um, yeah, and then also it, it sets up something that if it's, you know, reboots that kind of like the mount point is still in place. But without further ado, um, let's, well, we already know what to do. We, we kind of like pull the image over. Um, and my, my instance is right here. So I'm going to Docker pull and I'm just gonna, I was going to get this wrong. So I'll just copy this over here and pull the images and then that shouldn't take too long. So I have my image right here. The last time it was created was two weeks ago. So it's the, the latest version. I can I can double check kind of like with the releases. Um, yeah, about three weeks ago, the 1.03. That's fine. Um, finally, I want to show you where I kind of like mounted this volume um, and there's always one place called mount um, and you see here um, that volume Frankfurt 1 and I can actually remove these two files um, I'm just going to remove them like this. They're not needed at the moment. Um, they were from a previous installation. Um, all right. So I've, I've run this. Now I can, you know where the, the mount is. So now I can run the instance. I'm just going to give it a name. And I'm going to use this flag V, which is for mounting volumes. Um, and it's using this abbreviated version. Um, volume Frankfurt 101. So I hope this is correct. Yeah, it's here it's written with dashes, but actually in my in my instance it's um, on the server, or sorry, on the host, it's actually written with uh, underscores. So, all right, so that's what I'm going to use. And then colon, and now I want to use the kind of like the location where the data is actually stored in the in the container, in the Docker container. And um, he gives me this uh, kind of like instructions here of how to do it on fly.io and um, he's creating a mount called actual data as the source and then the destination is forward slash data. So I, I know that the kind of like the host, uh, sorry, the container location 
for the data that needs to be stored in amount as um, in lives in, in forward slash data. Finally, I want to expose um, these IPs, uh, sorry, these ports. Um, I'm going to expose port 5006 um, because this is where the, the front end is running. Um, so I'm going to publish, but I'm going to actually expose it on port 3000 of the host. Um, I don't know, just a bit, I like port 3000 a bit long better. Actual server, so I hope I typed this correctly. And then, yeah, we can see that the container is up and running. What we can do um, now is we can actually inspect the container. Um, and then there's like a bunch of stuff here. Um, if you're into Docker, you will understand most of it. Um, if not, it's not a problem right now. What I want to show you is really the mount instruction. And the mount instruction really tells us the source is mount volume FRI101, and the destination is data. Uh, and it's a type bind, so it stores all the data from the container right in on my on my host. Um, so this is this is exactly what we wanted. And yeah, the Docker logs have actual server, we can see that it's it's listening on 5006, but that's obviously, you know, we're, we're logging into the container, so the container is listening at 5006, but actually um, when we type PS, we see that the port 3000 is actually the one that's um, being exposed. So I'm just going to go here, go to port 3000. It says configure your server. So it will ask me what what server do I want to use, um, and I can change the server also because this is the web front end. Uh, I don't want to change the server. I want to like have a look at the demo. And the demo you can see here. Um, you have these different different tabs on the left, which shows you all your accounts, basically your ledger. Um, you have schedules, um, so like continuous payments that you have to make or deposits that will come in and yeah it's basically kind of like subscriptions so you would list probably a netflix subscription here because you don't it's tedious to type it in all the time um, or your paycheck for example would go here as a schedule so that it's automatically added um, whenever it's um, yeah actually transferred to you so typically at the end of the month or beginning of the month uh, for most people then you have different reports that you can like look at um, and you have kind of like your budgets and yeah the budgets is a pretty cool feature actually that you can have four months side by side and you can like toggle around which month you want to show um, yeah and this is our current month because we're in July you can create additional accounts um, and they're all of type kind of like checking cash savings credit card investments also long-term kind of like off-budget items that you want to list here so you know a mortgage or a house asset is, uh, or an investment account is not going to go into your monthly budget um, but it's still an asset that you want to keep track of um, interesting would be tracking something like a you know a tax account for example so in in some countries um, you get deducted your tax um, every month from your paycheck in other countries you have to pay a bulk sum at the end of the year um, in your kind of like income tax and you know oftentimes people just don't keep track of this and here you could you know create an account just for your your taxable income um, to kind of keep track of that and deduct it from your budget so this is the the demo and of course what's interesting is having a look at kind of like your own instance because this is our server now right this is this is ours and i've just created the password pressed ok and you can see i already have kind of like two files here 
um, I can, this is the demo file. This is also the demo file. I want to create a new file. All right, here we go. So the new file, I'm just going to put in my bank here. I'm going to say I have 2000 on this bank. Um, and let's say I just went, I'm going to go to the, or maybe yesterday, I went to the movies um, and the general expense cost me $20. It's an expensive movie, probably a Marvel movie. Um, and yeah, I can change this, uh, Mark's budget, and I can sync it. So what does it mean when it's synced? Um, it's kind of like, like uploaded to the cloud. I can exit from any, um, from any, it's basically synced with the server. Um, so if I connect to the server from a different front end, um, whether it's from an app or from my local machine, then I can basically get to my budget's data and it's it's up to date. I can create a schedule. Um, company XYZ is paying me and it's going to go in my account and my salary, let's say, is 2500 and it happens at the end of every month around the 28th. Uh, it will automatically add transaction to my account, to my ledger. And now this schedule is set and will repeat monthly. Um, so I can also edit this. If something should change, I can say it's between or exactly, which is really nice, um, which means I can, I can change this. And yeah, and that's about it. That's what I wanted to show you. Maybe last but not least, um, we can have a look at uh, on the mount um, on the files that were created. So there's there's two two folders that were created: the user files and the server files. And um, one contains a, the um, kind of like oh, let's, let's have a look in the user files. Yeah, one contains like my my database. Um, like cache data, the, the metadata, and so on. And the other contains also SQLite um, with my account data. Um, let me check if I can look into it. Yeah, not the best way to look into it um, because Cat cannot actually read a SQLite database. Um, but anyway. So yeah, this is um, actual, and I think it's a viable alternative to my budgeting plans. Um, of course, you can also, when you create kind of like a new new account, um, let's say bank two, I can import um, an Excel file or like my bank statement files, um, and then Actually, I can also export my my files um, as a CSV. So, if I want to work with that or have a deeper look, or then then I'm I'm able to do that. I can also filter by different versions. Um, I can reconcile because you know oftentimes you forget something and then it's no longer in in line with what actually. Um, like you have as a budget and this is super annoying if you use Google Sheets because um, there's just no way to, um, you always have to start from zero. Um, so I really love this. Um, you can also search, of course. Um, so search across pays, categories, general, yeah, or notes, right? This is also super helpful. And yeah, so what else can you do? You can manage payees so you can kind of like select different companies um, and delete them or merge them right if they happen to be the same and yeah that's it i 
hope you find this helpful. Um, it's very easy to get started. Um, we can like shut down our, um, the server will be running now with my, with my finances on there and I can log in from anywhere and kind of like access my personal finances and very securely because it's on my server that I can control. So I love that, that aspect because finances are really important to every individual and they should be um, much more important nowadays. So yeah, thanks so much for James for open sourcing this and I hope you learned something and that it's, um, that it helps you with your personal finances as well. So happy budgeting and uh, see you in the next one.